All right, here we go. Section four. I don't have a lot of time, so let's get this over and done with quickly. A musician has a new song available for downloading or streaming. The musician earns $0.09 each time the song is downloaded and $0.002 each time the song is streamed. Which of the following expressions represents the amount in dollars that the musician earns if the song is downloaded D times and streamed S times? It'd be like 0 0.09D plus 0 0.002S. So C. A quality control manager at a factory selects seven light bulbs at random for inspection out of every 400 light bulbs produced. At this rate, how many light bulbs will be inspected if the factory produces 20,000 light bulbs? That's times 50. So seven times 50, B. One end of a spring is attached to a ceiling. When an object of mass n kilograms is attached to the other end of the spring, the spring stretches to a length of L centimeters as shown in the equation above. What is M when L is 73? Uh, so 73 minus 24 is 49. Then we get 49 is equal to 3.5m, so 49 divided by 3.5 is going to be like little, like, like close to like 15 or something. Oh, okay, so A maybe? Nice. Well, we'll see, future me can tell me if I'm right. The amount of money a performer earns is directly proportional to the number of people attending the performance. The performer earns $120 at a performance where eight people attend. Cool. How much money will the performer earn when 20 people attend a performance uh, times 2.5, right? So then that's going to be 300, I think. See? <clears throat> the performer uses 43% of the money earned to pay the costs involved in putting on each performance. The rest of the money earned is the performer's profit. What is the profit the performer makes at a performance where eight people attend? So profit is going to be like the remainder of the 40, after the 43% is gone. So it's going to be 57% remaining. 57% of like 120 is like, well, 50% would be like 60. So 57% is going to be a little more. See? Uh, when 4 times the number x is added to 12, the result is 8. What no oh, 4 times the number. When 4x plus 12 is equal to 8, so 4x equals negative 4, x is negative 1. What number results when 2 times negative 1 is added to 7, 5, b? The equation above represents a parabola in the xy plane. Which of the following equivalent forms of the equation displays the x-intercepts of the parabola as constants or coefficients? So x-intercepts displayed as constants or coefficients. X-intercept means make y equal to 0. They want to show, they want you to have a form of the equation that actually shows you what x and what the x-intercepts equal, like, like visibly. Like it's one of the numbers there in the answer choices. That's why it's d, the factored form, because that tells you that x is 2 and 4. In a video game, each player starts the game with K points and loses two points each time a task is not completed. If a player who gains no additional points and fails to complete 100 tasks has a score of 200 points, what's the, he has positive points after failing 100 tasks? Okay, so he failed, so he went minus 200 and they still had 200, so 400, D. A worker uses a forklift to move boxes that weigh either 40 pounds or 65 pounds each. Let X be the number of 40 pound boxes and Y be the number of 65 pound boxes. The forklift can carry up to either 45 boxes or a weight of 2,400 pounds. Which of the following system of equality represents this relationship? X plus Y is like less than four, how many boxes was it? 40 or 45? X plus Y is like less than 45 and then 40 X plus 65 Y is like less than 2,400? 20, 20, so A, a function f satisfies f of 2 equals 3, f of 3 is 5, a function g satisfies g of 3 is 2, and g of 5 is 6. What's the value of f of g of 3? Well, in, do it inside out. So g of 3 is 2, now replace that, so that asks you what f of 2 is, and f of 2 is 3, and so the answer is B. Tony is planning to read a novel. The table above shows information about the novel, Tony's reading speed, and the amount of time he plans to spend reading the novel each day. If Tony reads... At the rates given in the table, which of the following is closest to the number of days it would take Tony to read the entire novel? <sighs> okay, so there's 350,000 words. Do pages matter? I, don't... Uh, I think they gave us a graph here with some extraneous information to scare us. Okay, wait, so I think if he reads three hours a day, uh, and he reads at a rate of 250 per minute, then he would read that times 60 an hour. 15,000, I think. So 15,000, he reads at a rate of 15,000 words an hour. Isn't that super fast? Wait, he reads at 250 words a minute? Okay, so this guy's just like speed reading genius, prodigy? Okay, so wait, so. Okay, so uh, taking into account his prodigious speed, I guess, so he read at 15,000 words an hour. Three hours a day, 45,000. 45,000 words a day. So we have to do 350,000-ish divided by 45,000. Be like 10 with an extra 100,000 left over. So like 12, 12 10? Oh, no, no, it would be less than, sorry. 10, 10 with like a, 
with like a hundred thousand too much. So then we have to go down by like two ish. So it'd be like eight. Yeah, it'd be. On January 1st, 2000, there were 175,000 tons of trash in the landfill that had a capacity of 325,000 tons. Each year since then, the amount of trash in the landfill increased by 7,500 tons. If Y represents the time in years after January 1st, 2000, which of the following inequalities describes a set of years where the landfill is at or above capacity? Okay, so Y should work if it's like 1,000, I think, and my computer's dying, despite it being pl No! One sec. Technical issues. We're better, I think. Okay, excuse me, sorry. What was this question about? Oh, so why represents the timing? Which of the following inequalities describes a set of years where the landfill is at or above capacity? Oh, we can stress test. So we can set a value for y that we know for sure is gonna work, like a thousand. So if y is a thousand, then the landfill is definitely gonna be full. It'll be like super overflowing. So then let's see, 325,000 minus 75. So that's like 315-ish, 318,000 is less than 1,000. That's not true. 325,000 is less than 7 million. That's true. 150,000 is greater than 7 million. That's not true. 175,000 plus 7 million is, okay, so it's like B or D. I think we can, now we have two answers left, so we can stress test those two. We could try an answer that we know shouldn't work. Like, it's not full yet. It's at 175,000, they said. So if Y is zero, meaning zero years after they started, so right now, then that shouldn't work. So... 320, 320, let's try B, 320,000 is less than zero. Okay, I don't think it's true. And the 175,000 is greater than, 175,000 plus zero is greater than or equal to 325,000. What? So n none of these? Oh, right, I forgot what I was, my, my, I forgot the thing that I just told you. Apparently I was, wasn't listening, which is in the correct answer, it shouldn't work, right? And then so isn't it D? Yes, I think so. Future me, check. A researcher conducted a survey to determine whether people in a certain large town prefer watching sports on television to attending the sporting event. The researcher asked 117 people who visited a local restaurant on a Saturday, and seven people refused to respond. Which of the following factors makes it least likely that a reliable conclusion can be drawn about the sports watching preferences of all people in the town? So in the survey questions or the research study questions on the math, like they want to make sure that you have random sampling, because random sampling is how you get like good data. So then the fact that all these people are at a restaurant, so D. As a note, I haven't really seen sample size be the answer. Even when the sample was like, I've seen a question I think where the sample size was like 20 and it still wasn't the problem. Like the problem, it's a bigger problem that it's like not randomly selected. Like it'd be better if you had 20 randomly selected people as opposed to like 100 people who are all members of my family or something like that. Uh, 14, according to the line of best fit in the scatter plot above, which of the following best approximates the year in which the number of miles traveled by air passengers in country X were estimated to be 550 billion? Okay, Y axis, 550, that's there between the 500 and the 600. I, I thank you for making me find that college board. And then the, that intersects with the line of best fit at a little bit before 2005, so 2003. The distance traveled by Earth in one orbit around the sun is 580 million miles. I'm gonna have fun estimating this one, I think. Earth makes one complete orbit around the sun in one year of the following, which is close to the average speed of the Earth in miles per hour as it orbits the sun. So distance equals rate times time. If they say average speed, average speed being the rate. So rate is equal to distance divided by time. The distance they said was what? 580 million. So we do 580 million per year, per one year. We have to change that into hours. So that's 365 days times 24. 365 times 20 is gonna be like 730, and then plus an extra four times. So 800 and something, I'm gonna say. So if it's like 800 and something, I think that when that eight gets, that 58 million, the 58 at the beginning of it encounters the eight at the beginning, then it's gonna turn to like seven or something. And then since it's like actually eight, yeah, since 365 times 24 is like, I think 8,000 and change, it'll be like less than seven. I hope, A, future me, please be nice. 16, the table above summarizes the results of 200 law school graduates who took the bar exam. If one of the surveyed graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random for an interview, what is the probability that the person chosen did not take the review course? Okay, so the first thing that they mention is typically your denominator. So one of the surveyed graduates who passed the bar exam chosen at random, passed the bar chosen. Okay, so the whole pass the bar exam was 25. What's the probability that they did not take this? Seven out of 25. Seven out of 25, B. 
the atomic weight of an unknown element in atomic mass units, amu, is approximately 20% less than that of calcium. The atomic weight of calcium is 40 amu. Which of the following best approximates the atomic weight in amu of the unknown element? I apologize, chemists everywhere. I have no idea how to actually say that. Okay, so then if this unknown thing, this unknown element, kryptonium or whatever, is that the word? Okay, so it's 20% less than 40. It's going to be a little bit less than 40, right? So like 30, you know, see? They, they didn't even spread the answer. They, they didn't even put the answer choices like close together. They made that very easy to estimate. A survey was taken of the value of homes in a county, and it was found that the mean home value was 165,000, and the mean home value, wait, what? It was, it was found that the mean home value is 165,000, and the median home value is 125,000. Okay, which of the following situations could explain the difference between the mean and median income values of the county? Uh, so if the mean is larger, well, we can test this out with a smaller number set, like one, two, and three. So if we have like a set of three, three numbers, one, two, and three, then the median and the mean would be two. But then if I increase like the, the last one, like if I make the numbers at one, two, and 10 now, then the median is still two, but the average would be, what, 13 divided by three, so I got larger. So there are gonna be a couple at homes that are like super expensive. They're closer to, what does that mean? Valued less? No, I think it's, yeah, C. A sociologist chose 300 students at random from each of two schools and asked each student how many siblings he or she has. The results are shown in the table below. Entrancing. There are a total of 2,400 students at Lincoln School and 3,300 schools at Washington School. S schools at Washington School. Yeah, okay. What's the median number of siblings for all the students surveyed? Median is n plus 1 divided by 2. So it's going to be 600 divided by, or six, n plus 1 divided by 2. 600 plus 1 divided by 2 is 300.5. I think, so we have to find the 300.5th person. In starting from either the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter because uh, you're, you're going towards the middle anyway, you'll meet at the same place. So number, I'm gonna start from the lowest. The number of siblings zero has 120 plus 140, which is 260. That does not, so person one to 260 does not contain the 300.5th person. Now, the answer is gonna be number of siblings one because 80 plus 110, there's 190 people in that category. And then so starting from 161 all the way to 350, I think, is going, or 450, I think, is going to contain yeah, 260 to 450, if I can do my math right. It's hard without writing anything down. Is That's going to contain the 300.5 guy. And then so I think the answer is B. <laughs> Please be right. <laughs> Based on the survey data, which of the following most accurately compares the expected total number of students with four siblings at the two schools? Aha! So interesting. This is question number 20. So there's no way that it's like answer choice A because answer choice A doesn't re require me to like use my brain. So if it's a higher number question, that means that it's like a higher trickiness level, which means that you should be using your brain more. And A looks like the too good to be true, no brain answer choice, given that like the column four says two tens. But Luckily, we read everything, and so we noticed that there are different numbers of students at these schools. They have the same proportion, like they, each of them have 10 out of 300 of the students have uh, four siblings, but so that is one thirtieth. So one thirtieth of the students have uh, four siblings, but we need to multiply that with the total. So if the total is 2,400, that'll be 80. Total is 300 and, or 3,300, then it'd be 110, I think. So the difference, of, yeah, so Washington's bigger. Should be more than Washington school. Nope. And the total number of students before than Washington is expected to be C. Project manager estimates that a project will take X hours to complete, where X is greater than 100. The goal is for the estimate to be within 10 hours of the time it will actually take to complete the project. If the manager meets the goal and it takes Y hours to complete the project, which of the following inequalities represents the relationship between the estimated time and the actual completed time? Oh, another stress test question. Yeah, anytime you encounter like these weird variables, or anytime I encounter these weird variables and stuff, I'm very like, I'm, I'm very aware of the fact that I'm like not the best at math and I want to try to make my life easier because I don't particularly like math. And so I'm going to try to plug in, just use concrete values. Uh, okay, so that's speech aside. Let's make if x is greater than 100, I'm gonna make x 101. And if y has to be within 10 of that, I'm gonna make y 102. I could have made it like 110 or something, but like I said, I wanna make my life easy, so we'll try that first. <laughs> All right, so A, 101 plus 102 is less than 10? No, 102 is greater than 101 plus 10. 102 is greater than 111? No, see, 102 is less than 101, minus, so 91, no. So it's D, negative 10 is less than or equal to one? So less than 10, yeah. I didn't say equal to, sorry. So negative 10 is less than one, which is less than 10, D. 
Uh, at a large distance, a large distance r from a radio antenna, the intensity of the radio signal i is related to the power of the signal p by the formula above. So it has to be a large distance. Uh, sorry, ADD kicking in. Which of the following expressions expresses the square of the distance from the radio antenna in terms of the intensity of the radio signal and the power of the signal? Uh, they just want me to solve for r squared. Okay, so then we can just cross multiply that. So move the four pi r squared to the left by multiplying it on both sides. You get i four pi r squared, and then divide the i four pi. So p over i four i pi, i four pi p over i four pi. P o oh, there's only one, B. For the same signal emitted by a radio antenna, observer A measures its intensity to be 16 times the intensity observed by observer B. The distance of observer A from the radio antenna is what fraction of the distance of observer B from the radio? I'm just gonna plug in. I'm gonna like plug and chug the answers because I literally can't figure that out like in my head, I think. So then, or I don't have a strong enough con grasp of math to confidently know like which, that I, if I tackle this in a certain way, it's gonna be right. And so luckily, thanks to SAT, gives me the answer choices. So let's see, so if, we, if the answer is A, we're gonna have to replace R with one fourth R and keep in mind that it would be in parentheses because we're replacing it into the equation, meaning that the equation would turn into like P over four pi parentheses, one fourth R squared. The one fourth R squared is gonna turn into R squared over 16. That means we're gonna have a four pi R squared over 16 in the denominator. Denominator is gonna, that 16 on the bottom, it can, will flip over and go to the top. What giving, oh, isn't the answer just A then? So it'll give us like 16 times P over four pi R squared. Aha, uh -huh, I see how it works then. So like B would give an intensity that's like 16 squared, 16 squared times stronger. And then C would be like 64 squared stronger. And then D would be like 256 squared stronger, which I don't know what those are. So. 24, the equation of a circle in XY plane is shown above what's the range of the circle. The shortcut, you take the X coefficient, take the Y coefficient, cut them in half, put them in their respective parentheses with the X and the Y, add the squares of those, both of those things to the other side. Okay, so then x plus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals negative 1 plus 4 plus 1. So 4, radius squared is 4, so radius is 2, a. Graph of the linear function f has intercepts at a0 and 0b in the xy plane. If a plus b is 0 and a doesn't equal b, which of the following is true about the slope of the graph of s? Plug in, because I can't math. So minus 1 plus 1, I'm just going to do that, I think. So minus 1 and 1 for a and b. So negative 1, 0, and 0, 1. Doesn't have a positive slope. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's a positive slope, a. 26, the complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above, which of the following are equal to one? So which of the y coordinates are one for the respective x coordinates in these parentheses? So when f is, when x is negative four is y one? Seems like it. f is two three halves, is it one? Seems like it. If f is three, two three, is it one? Seems like it. I think it's d. I feel like, okay, I hope. Future me check. Uh, okay, there's, apparently they, mistakenly put a reading passage here for question 27, so here we go. Two samples of water of equal mass are heated to 60 degrees Celsius. One sample is poured into an insulated container and the other sample is poured into a non-insulated container. Great. The samples are then left for 70 minutes to cool in a room having a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. The graph above shows the temperature at each sample at, of each sample at 10 minute intervals, which of the following statements correctly compares the average rates at which the, oh, okay. Okay, sorry, I like fell asleep in the middle of that. So A in every, t I don't think it's A or B. I, like just the fact it starts with every, like I'm pretty sure that you can't make like a con uh, extreme statement like that for something when there's, you know, there's like, there are curves, so there's things changing. In the intervals from zero to 10 and from 10 to 20, the rate of change of the temperature of the insulated sample are greater magnitude. So rate of change here would be like the slope. So then for, do they say insulated or non-insulated? Insulated. So is the slope of the square steeper than the slope of the dots? No. Okay, so I think it's D then. The intervals from 10 to 10 within the rates of change of temperature from non-insulated sample of greater magnitude. Yeah, it's like <laughs> steepest one. 28. In the xy plane above, ABCD is a square and point E is the center of the square. The coordinates of points C and E are 7, 2, and 1, 0, respectively. Which of the following is an equivalent of the line that passes through points B and D? Uh, it'd be perpendicular, right? So then we have to find AC, we have to find its opposite reciprocal slope, and then we have to find where the y-intercept is. So AC, let's see, change in y over change in x, that would be like two over six, so one third. Then the slope of BD would be negative three. And though you can see from the picture that the y-intercept would be positive, so does that help? 
Yeah, I think it's B. Nice. In the system of equations above, A and B are constants. For which of the following values of A and B does the system of equations have exactly two real so I have Oh boy. Okay, so this is a number of solutions quadratic question, meaning I have to use the discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. And in order for the quadratic to have two real solutions, that's like math's way of saying that the discriminant would be positive. So B squared minus 4AC is going to be positive. So the B squared here would be, well, let's combine these two into one quadratic equation. So you get AX squared plus B minus 3 equals 0. The B squared would be zero squared. Okay, so something to point out here just real quick, which is that when you do b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant formula, the b in that formula represents the x coefficient. So it, it would represent the number that's like right in front of the x. This quadratic, the ax squared plus b plus uh, minus three, doesn't have an x coefficient. So I know it says the letter b, but like the letter b in the equation of question 29 is not the same as like the theoretical b that represents the x coefficient of a quadratic. So then if we were doing b squared minus 4ac, I have to find the x coefficient of this thing and then plug that into uh, the discriminant formula as b. So there, that's why I did 0 squared, because there is no x coefficient here. It just goes like eight x squared, ax squared, and then no x stuff, and then just like b minus 3. Okay, so then our a coefficient, a in b squared minus 4c stands for your x squared coefficient, so that's going to be correspond with a in this question. Oh my god, they purposely made this as confusing as possible, I think. And then c corresponds to the constant or the thing or that which is not an x squared or x coefficient. So it's everything else essentially. So c is going to be a little weird. Like c is going to be b minus 3. So we have to do b squared, which is 0 squared, minus 4 times a times parentheses b minus 3. Minus 4ab plus 12a. Minus 4, okay, hopefully I remember that. Minus 4ab plus 12a. I think that's right. So let's plug in these answer choices, these values for a and b that we had in the equation, and let's see if that works. So minus 4ab plus 12a, right? Uh, minus 4ab would be 16 minus, uh, or plus 12a would be minus 20, so it's negative 8, so it's not a. With uh, b, that would give us 2 is 8, uh, 32 minus 24 is 8, so maybe. Uh, c, this would give us minus 4ab, so 8. Oh, but it'd be negative 32, so it'd be like negative 32 plus, okay, this is going to be like a big number, and then d12, negative 48, uh, plus 12, negative 40, so like 96, I think, a big number, so B. Okay, I hope. 30, the figure above shows a rectangular hexagon with sides of length A and a square with sides of length A. What, did I read that? Shows a regular hexagon with sides of length A and a square with sides of length A. Oh, okay. If this area of the hexagon is 384 square root, it's 384 root three square inches. 384 square root of three square inches. What is the area in square inches of the square? Why do they repeat so many words in this question question? Okay. Uh, I think we can use area of regular hexagon, which is like 3 root 3 over 2 times a squared. 3 root 3 over 2 times a squared is equal to 384 root 3. The root 3s cancel. Let's multiply the 2 over. You get 768. Then we divide that by 3. So you get a squared is 768 divided by 3. 2, 5, 6? A? Please, please be right. I'll be so impressed if that's correct. A coastal geologist estimates that a certain country's beaches are eroding at a rate of 1.5 feet per year. According to the geologist's estimate, how long will it take in years for a country's beaches to erode by 21 feet? Uh, it's whatever 21 divided by 1.5 is. 1.5 times 5 would be like 15. Then you have 6 left. 1.5 times 4 is 6. Oh, is it 14? I think it's 14. If h hours and 30 minutes is equal to 450 minutes, what's the value of h? Oh, okay, so h hours is equal to 420 minutes because you just take the 30 minutes out and then it's 7. In the xy plane, the point 3,6 lies on the graph of the function f of x is 3x squared minus bx plus 12. What's the value of b? Just plug those points into the equation. So like f of x, the left-hand side stands for y. And then all of the x's on the right-hand side should change into 3. So we have 6 is equal to 327 minus 3x plus 12. 6 is equal to 27 minus 3x plus 12, I think. So that's 39. 
than negative 33. Negative 33 is equal to minus 3. Oh, so x is 11, I hope. In one semester, Doug and Laura spend a combined 250 hours in the tutoring lab. If Doug spent 40 more hours in the lab than Laura did, how many hours did Laura spend in the lab? So system of equations, D plus L is equal to 250. D equals 40 plus L. So 40 plus L plus L is equal to 250. 2L plus 40 is equal to 250. 2L is equal to 210. L is 105, hopefully. Jane made an initial deposit to a savings account. Each week thereafter, she deposited a fixed amount to the account. The equation above models the amount A in dollars that Jane has deposited after, after T weekly deposits. According to the model, how many dollars was Jane's initial deposit? Okay, so that's zero weeks after. It's when T is zero, A is 15. In the figure above, point O is the center of the circle. Line segments L, M, and M, N are tangent to the circle at points L and N. L, M, N. Oh, so they make 90 degree angles. Oh! That might make a 30, 60, 90 if you cut that in half, like if you connect OM. I think that's too, whatever, I don't know if that's relevant. And the segments intersect at point M as shown. If the circumference of the circle is 96, what's the length of minor arc L? It is relevant. Okay, so then if that's two 30, 60, 90 triangles, like we have the 90 degrees at L and N, we have the 30 degrees meeting together at point M, added together to the 60, then we're gonna have 120 degrees here for angle O. So we can use the arc over circumference formula. Arc over circumference formula says arc over circumference is equal to degrees over 360. So our degrees is 120. So 120 over 360 is one third. Arc over circumference. What did they say the circumference was? 96. Arc over 96 is equal to 132. 32, I think. A botanist is cultivating a rare species of plants in a controlled environment and currently has 3,000 of these plants. The population of this species that the, that the botanist expects to grow next year can be estimated from the number of plants this year by the equation below. Okay, gross. The constant, X, the constant K in the formula is the number of plants the environment is able to support. Based on the formula, what is the number of plants two years from now if K equals four? Okay, I'm not sure I can do this in my head. I, at least I'll like... I think I'll be able to say the steps though, so let's see. Like, we wanna set this up as like, end of, let's solve for end of next year, and then we have to do it again. So let's say end of next year is gonna be like 3,000. We put in 3,000 for all of the this years. 3,000 plus 0.2, 3,000, which is 600. Okay, so 3,000 plus 600 times one minus 3,000 over 4,000, so one, one minus three, four, so one fourth. What's a fourth of six, 150? It's gonna be like 3150 after one year. But then the, the second year, I don't know what I can do. We do the same thing. So now let's set this year as 3150 and see what we get. So 3150 plus 0.2 of 3150 is gonna be, well, well what's 0.2 of the extra 150? I think it's just a fifth of 150, right? So 30, so 630. So 630 times one minus 3150 over 4,000. One minus 850 over 4,000, which I'm really not sure what that's gonna, I'm just, I, I guess I could like try to like divide them by, 50s maybe, but okay. The next step is to solve for that and then that's your answer, boom. Thanks future me. 38, the botanist would like to increase the number of plants that the environment can support so that the population of the species will increase more rapidly. If the botanist's goal is, the, is that the number of plants will increase from 3,000 this year to 3,360 next year, how many plants must the modified environment support? What was that, K? Yeah, so we have to solve for K when we now we know what next year and this year are. So, okay, we'll set it up as 3360 is equal to 3000 plus 600 times one minus 3000 over K. Oh, can I do this maybe? So let's, we can subtract the 3000 over first, so 360, and then we can divide the 600 now that there's no addition going on, on the left-hand side, right? Because we got the 300 out of there. Okay, so we have 360 divided by 600, which is six tenths, three fifths. Three fifths is equal to, now we can open up this parentheses here because there's nothing left on the right hand side. One minus 3000 over K. Subtract the one off to the other side. Uh, three fifths, it was 360, yeah, so it's three fifths minus one is negative two fifths. Negative two fifths is equal to negative 3000 over K. Cross multiply. Negative two K is equal to. 3,000 times 5, 15,000. Is the answer 7,500? Please be 7,500. If it is, I'll be so happy. All right, done. Thanks for watching. Test three coming up next.